If you've been hanging around the health and wellness world, you've probably heard people talking about red light therapy. Some say it helps heal injuries faster, while others claim it boosts your skin, energy, and even your mood. Sounds almost too good to be true, right? In this video, we'll break it all down. What red light therapy actually is, how it works on a cellular level, how to use it properly, and what side effects you should watch out for. Let's start with the basics. So what even is red light therapy? Red light therapy is a treatment that exposes your body to specific wavelengths of red and near infrared light. The light is delivered through a reddish heat lamp or sometimes an LED panel of several lamps that shine red light onto your skin. The wavelengths used in red light therapy are usually between 600 and 850 nanometers. Now, depending on your device, the red light that you're exposed to will either fall on the lower end of that range, so around 620 to 700, or if it's a near infrared device, then it will be on the higher end, so 700 to 850. Both of these ranges are non-ionizing, which means they don't damage your DNA or tissues the way that UV rays or X-rays can. So it's generally very safe, but I will talk about possible side effects later in the video. Red light is also not the same as a tanning bed, which uses UV rays, so you're not increasing your risk of skin cancer. Instead, this kind of light interacts with your cells in a very unique way, and that's where the real magic happens. You see, the reason red light therapy works is because of something called photobiomodulation. That's just a fancy word for how light affects the cells and tissues in your body. When red or near infrared light hits your skin, it penetrates deep into your tissues, sometimes up to five or six centimeters, depending on the wavelength. Once the light reaches your cells, it gets absorbed by a part of your cell called the mitochondria, so the powerhouse. Inside your mitochondria, there's an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase. This enzyme plays a key role in how your body produces energy in the form of ATP. What red light does is it helps cytochrome C oxidase work more efficiently by knocking off nitric oxide that sometimes binds to it and slows it down. When the nitric oxide is cleared, the enzyme can get back to doing its job at an optimal pace. More ATP means more energy for your cells, and that leads to faster healing, better tissue repair, reduced inflammation, and improved performance across a bunch of different systems in your body. Some researchers also believe that red light affects gene expressions in a more healthful and beneficial way, so how your body reads the genes that you were born with. This could also help regulate inflammation, improve wound healing, and even support your immune system. Based on these biological pathways, there are quite a few benefits that are linked to red light therapy directly. Let's go over some of the most common and best researched ones. One is skin health. Red light has been shown to reduce wrinkles, fine lines, sun damage, and even acne. The light stimulates collagen and elastin, two key proteins that make your skin firm and youthful. Next, muscle recovery and athletic performance. Because red light helps reduce inflammation and it also boosts ATP, it can speed up muscle repair and muscle recovery after workout. Many athletes use red light therapy to reduce their soreness, enhance endurance, and even increase strength gains. Third, joint pain and arthritis. There are also studies that show that it reduces pain and stiffness in people who already have osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. This is due to the anti-inflammatory effects of it which can make a big difference in joint mobility. Next, wound healing and tissue repair. Because red light helps speed up the repair of your skin, muscles, and bone tissue, it is sometimes used in post-surgery recovery, sports injuries, and even diabetic ulcers. And lastly, mood and cognitive health. Some studies show that red light can improve mood, reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety, and even support brain health especially in older people with cognitive decline. Now let's talk about how to actually get all of these benefits if you want to try it out. First off, you will need a device. I use an at-home near-infrared sauna that I bought for quite cheap online. It's really just a wooden board with four reddish heat lamps attached to it, and you could even make one yourself. I will link mine in the description, and if you're using a similar setup, then you will be getting a mix of both red light therapy and heat therapy because these lamps also emit heat. 
I personally believe it's the best and most affordable way to use red light therapy. There are also LED panels out there that you could buy. These don't produce much heat at all. So they focus mostly on the light's wavelengths for photobiomodulation without making you sweat much. They're great if you just want mitochondrial and skin benefits without the thermal effects. Again, my setup combines both. So you get the red light and the warming effect that also boosts circulation and helps you sweat, which can be great for detox purposes and muscle relaxation. So it really comes down to what you're looking for and how much you want to spend. Assuming you're using a device similar to mine, here's how to get the most out of it. In terms of distance, you want to sit or stand around 12 to 24 inches, so 30 to 60 centimeters away from the lights. Closer will give you stronger light exposure and more heat, but it can be too intense, especially on sensitive areas. You want to feel warm, but not like you're baking. Next, duration. You want to start with around one to three minutes per area, especially if you're new to it. Your four areas are your front, back, and both of your sides. You can work up to five minutes per area as your body adjusts. So a full session might be around 15 to 20 minutes total, and I wouldn't do it much longer. Especially in the beginning, it can sometimes be too much. In terms of frequency, most people do well with three to five sessions per week. Some use it daily, but again, it's good to start slow and then see how your body responds. Next, skin exposure. And here you obviously want to make sure that the area that you're treating is bare skin. So clothes will block some of the beneficial wavelengths. Red light doesn't penetrate very well through fabric. So I just sit in front of the device in my underwear. And then positioning, you can sit, stand or lie down. It doesn't really matter. But many people build setups in their bathrooms or closets so that the room can heat up. I use mine in the bedroom and the light is warm enough that I still break a sweat. So I don't even need to be in an enclosure, but this would obviously boost the thermal effect even more. In terms of eye protection, the bulbs are very bright and even though they don't emit UV, they can still produce strong visible and infrared light. If you're facing the lights directly, especially from a closer range, think about buying red tinted safety glasses. Now the research on the effect of red light on your eyes is mixed. Some say it's beneficial, others say it's detrimental. I prefer to stay on the safe side, so I do wear goggles when using it. And lastly, consistency is key. Like most natural therapies, this isn't a one and done thing. So you will get best results from regular ongoing use. So whether you're using it for skin, joints, energy or detox, give it at least four to six weeks before expecting big shifts. Now let's talk about possible side effects and things to watch out for. First is mild skin irritation. Some people notice this, for example, some redness or some tightness, and this usually happens if they're overdoing it. So if it happens to you, just reduce your session time or take a break for a few days. Next, eye sensitivity, and I already talked about this. I prefer to stay on the safe side, so I do wear goggles, but some people don't, so it's up to you. Third is overuse. Here you really have to realize that more is not always better. Too much red light can actually have the opposite effect. That means small to moderate doses help, but too much can be detrimental. So stick to the recommended time and don't go crazy, especially in the beginning. Then we have detox reactions. Some people, myself included, experience mild detox reactions when they first start using it. And this goes especially for the heat lamp setup that I'm using because it also increases circulation and sweating. Here, symptoms can include grogginess, fatigue, or mild headaches. It's usually a sign that your body is mobilizing stored toxins and adjusting to the increased mitochondrial activity and the increased blood flow. If that happens, just reduce session time again, stay well hydrated, and give your body time to adapt. To wrap up this video, let me say that red light therapy is one of those things that once you discover them, you never really want to go back. At least that's how it was for me. The idea that light can heal us isn't new, but nowadays we can harness more of it through the special lamps that we have available. So if you're dealing with fatigue or other chronic conditions, then this is one of the most effective things that you should try out. Just start slow, be consistent, and pay attention to how your body reacts. Again, I will include the link to my DIY sauna in the description, along with my chronic fatigue recovery program that goes into more detail on how to use it correctly. A few years ago, I would have never thought that something so small and comparatively cheap 
could be as effective as a sauna that costs several thousand bucks. Really powerful stuff. 